Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be my Q&A. A couple videos ago, I actually can't quite remember how many videos ago, I asked for you all to either uh, comment your questions to me or send me um, your questions on Instagram. And I've compiled those and a couple other questions that I've received over my duration so far on YouTube. And I thought I'd answer a few today, or at least as many as I can get. Um, wrote them all down. Uh, it's a pretty decent list, so I'll see what I can get to. Um, if I don't, I'll probably answer them in a later video. Um, but while we're answering those questions, we're also going to carve pumpkins. So I have at least two pumpkins. We'll see how, where we get through everything first. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. While I am working on a design, let's answer at least a few of the basic questions first. Um, one question that I got was, are you from the Midwest? The answer is yes. I am from Illinois, born and raised. I lived, I was born and lived in Southern Illinois for most of my life. Uh, went to uh, U of I in Champaign for college and I never left. So I've been here for, I don't know how many years now. If I think about it too much, I feel old. I'm 32, so <laughs> if that gives you that kind of idea there. What kind of what scary eyes do I want to do? Crap, hold on. I have enough jack-o'-lanterns around this house. You'd think I would determine a creepy face by now. So the next question that I got was, are you married? Yes, I am happily married several years now. My nickname for him is Shakespeare uh, because he recited was it Sonnet 18, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day? Um, after we watched the movie Shakespeare in Love, I was making coffee one night um, and he approached me in the kitchen and came up behind me and started reciting that to me. And I was speechless. So um, he is my Shakespeare very uh, romantic individual. I have no idea if this is gonna turn out right, but their jack-o'-lanterns are not supposed to be perfect. This is a jaggedy tooth uh, jack-o'-lantern, and we're just gonna go with it. So, that's kind of what we're working with right now. It'll look better whenever I'm actually carving. Okay, <clears throat> so. Another question that I got was, do I have kids or do I want kids? The answer is no. I would rather be the badass aunt um, who teaches my nieces and nephews everything they shouldn't know. <laughs> um, their get out of jail free card at least once in their life. Um, I'd rather be that person. The one that they call when I'm like, uh, Aunt Nix, I screwed up. Can you please come get me? That's me. Um, so, and my, uh, my sister-in-law is very well aware of this, so <laughs> hopefully they don't need that. Um, but I'd rather be that than an actual parent. Just my personal feelings on the matter. Nothing wrong with kids, I just don't think I'd be a, I'm not the mom type. I, I can mom people, but when it's to like really little ones. I'm more terrified that I'm gonna screw something up. So that's my mentality on that. Another question that I got was, where did you or how did you and your husband meet? So this is the nerdiest thing ever. Um, and it's oh so us. So I met my husband at a vampire LARP at the University of Illinois. We were specifically playing, um, Vampire Requiem, that is from, uh, what is it from, White Wolf, that play style, at least that um, format, and I was a, was I a sophomore, yeah, I was a sophomore at college, and I met him then, didn't really talk to him that much at that point, instead, um, I think it was another year or two before I actually ran into him and started really talking to him. Uh, but we were playing vampires. <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, but it's totally me and him. Um, and 
I remember his character, for those of you who don't know, when you play Vampire Requiem or the older version of it, which is Vampire Masquerade, the hierarchy in the game is you are a prince, like there is a prince of the city, who is essentially kind of like the ruler of that domain, that city. And um, then you have other hierarchies beneath that and everything else. It depends on the game, depends on the person playing, depends on the format you're trying to go with. It always changed. Um, normally every six months to a year it always changed uh, because politics. And I remember um, he became prince of the city and he wanted my character to be the Seneschal. The Seneschal is the second in command. And I had never, like my character had never interacted with this character before, really, and I'm just like, what are you doing? And we just started talking, we call it, there's in character when you're actually in your character, and there's out of character, whenever you're just talking like real life person, A to B and everything else like that. So we met up out of character to discuss things, trying to figure out, hey, since we're gonna be working together in this game, um, we should probably get to know each other. <laughs> And lo and behold, um, we became best friends, and then we became boyfriend and girlfriend, and before you know it, he asked me to marry him, and of course I said yes. So, um, that's my How I Met My Husband story, as we were playing vampires together. So, um, I'll give you a freebie answering a question here. Uh, favorite clan. If we're going by... I played Requiem, so if we're going by Requiem rules, my favorite clan to play would have to be Gangrel. I just love the animalistic aspect of them. Um, if I had to pick what clan am I really in person, I'd have to go with Deva, as much as I hate to admit it. Nothing, not that there's anything wrong with Deva. I've played Deva before. I like, I like them, I do. It's just, I just like Gangrel better. Um, but I know I'm totally a Deva what with um, my uh, artistic background and things like that and everything and totally, totally them. Um, and I would survive better at an art gallery than I would out in the woods. So <laughs> let's, I won't even pretend that. Next question, what do you do for work? Um, I am a journalist. Specifically, I am the uh, executive producer of the morning show of my local TV station. So, I help craft what that show looks like um, every morning, Monday through Friday. So that means I help, um, I help craft it, I help put, figure out um, the order of the stories that air, um, things like that. I help edit anything that needs to be written, I help um, edit any video that needs to be edited, all of that. Um, I also help figure out guests and who our guests are going to be for the next day or that morning or whatnot. Um, so all of that. Um, I work with a team of uh, anchors, another producer, uh, we work with photogs, other reporters. Uh, so pretty much that's what I do every single day. And as for the type of stories that I work on, that changes. So it could be your everyday stories, such as anything with major with the weather that happened. Recently we had um, some severe weather roll through, flooding, a um, couple tornadoes touched down, not in the immediate area, but nearby. So things like that. I also, unfortunately, do cover crime. Um, I do write up those. COVID, unfortunately, I, I run the gamut. It's your general everyday assignments, as much as I hate to admit it. Uh, the fact that some of that stuff really is everyday stuff, but it is. Um, so that's the kind of stories that I cover. Although my favorite stories to cover are those where we help people. Um, your good news stories, your stories such as helping a kid with a make-a-wish um, actually have his wish fulfilled, or those in the, like athletes going to the Olympics and their first Olympics and what that's like and everything else. So those are the kind of stories that I prefer to be able to work on and help write and figure out. But generally it's um, whatever's considered the quote-unquote news of the day. 
So that's what I help assist with um, more often than not. I did see a hack where you could probably use um, uh, the handheld mixer and you could put it inside uh, a pumpkin and turn it on and it should, in theory, help get rid of all the goop on the sides. But I really did not want to destroy my handheld mixer since it's actually my grandmother's rest your soul and i don't want to damage that next question <laughs> i got this one and i had to sit there and think for a while i'm like how what what would my answer to this be uh what is your favorite childhood halloween memory and what got you hooked on halloween okay so favorite childhood memory um halloween memory i don't even remember how old i was in this instance but my mother, like I was, I know I was little. I was maybe six, smaller. Enough that my mom had to crouch down to hug me. My mother suggested to me, hey, how about we go TP your grandparents? And little me is like, yeah, let's go do it. Um, Cause I just thought that was so cool. And <laughs> so um, at that day and age, um, I only lived a block from my grandparents. And so here little me, trying to be all sneaky with my mom as we go TP my grandparents' house. And they had, um, I know, I remember they had this huge tree that was catty corner to their garage. And so we're just throwing toilet paper everywhere, at least I'm trying to. I can probably get like the lower limbs because I'm so short at this day and age. Um, so I'm trying to do that, my mom's TPing. And I kid you not, the cops roll up. Um, cop rolls up, turns on a spotlight on us. My mom crouches down behind me to hug me and everything else is um, to kind of like, I guess, protect me at the same time, but also uh, kind of show the cop that, hey, this isn't just a little kid. This is mom's with them. Um, and the cop just kind of smiled, was like, have fun ladies, and then drove off. And little did I know that my grandma was actually watching from a window. So, <laughs> um, that is my only experience TPing anybody, uh, was TPing my grandma and grandpa. And I, I loved it, I did. I mean, I don't condone TPing now, it's a god awful mess. And well, considering how we hoarded uh, <laughs> toilet paper so long ago. It feels so weird. Um, but yeah, that was, I would say that's definitely my favorite childhood Halloween memory. As for what got me hooked on Halloween, I really don't know. Um, I mean, we, of course we celebrated Halloween when I was a kid and that was all nice and fun and you could be whoever you wanted to be and do whatever you wanted to do. Wait, copyright, sorry. I would say it didn't really hit me until I was in high school. And that's because I uh, became friends with a group of girls. All of us, um, we were all different ages. Um, one of my friends was a year older than me. Two others were two years older than me. All of us had December birthdays. So we kind of just like all clicked. And we were all into anime and vampires and all that kind of fun jazz and whatnot and i don't know i guess it's you could say i just fell in love with like being able to celebrate the holiday with um a bunch of other people uh who kind of like the same things as me and whatnot and like they just made halloween fun because we would every single halloween we would go do something whether we would check out a haunted house or we would um, go to each other's houses and do like movie marathons or whatnot. I don't know. It was just, there was something, and I know this is gonna sound so cliche, there was something magical about having a group of friends that you could just kind of go and ex like, ha just have fun with the holiday with. And it just kind of stuck. Um, that's also where I learned kind of like, I started experimenting with my sense of style because I went to Catholic school 
kindergarten through eighth grade. And so when I got to high school, oh gods, did I kind of, <laughs> did I kind of just like decide to have like fun with like my style and my aesthetic and everything else. So that's, uh, that's kind of where that all started. Um, but yeah, I guess you could say that my love for Halloween and why I decided to go crazy with it is because it just kind of reminds me of a time in my childhood whenever I finally got to experiment with being me and doing stuff that kind of just really made me truly happy um, and just kind of learn more about myself in that regard. And that kind of leads into my the next question that I got. How would you describe your personal style and aesthetic? Now, I thought long and hard about how to answer this one. Not because it's difficult, but it's just because it's kind of not easy to put into words. Um, yes, I'm goth. That's, I don't hide that at all, no lie. Um, all I wear is black. Um, I'm definitely into like gothic music and metal music and everything else like that. And I go to like, back whenever we had uh, consistent goth nights, I would always go check those out. As for my exact aesthetic, I suppose you could say it changes per day, and let me explain why. For work, I'm a corp goth. Yes, I can totally get away with wearing some of my more flamboyant, let's go with that, attire to work. Uh, just because I've been there long enough and they just kind of like nod their heads like, that's just who she is. And I have proven myself in my work ethic that appearance doesn't mean a thing. And I'm also not on camera, so they don't really care so much. And I'm also just kind of known as like the, I'm as being the different one. And I, I will take that. I will happily take that. But at the same time, I guess you could say I love my lace. I love like my frills. I love my flowy clothes and everything else. So I suppose you could say kind of like modern day witch meets corp goth meets a hint of Victorian goth. Um, it kind of changes because yes, there are days where I just want to be dressed to the absolute nines and be, and just kind of look like I came out of like the movie Dracula. <laughs> but then there are also days where I just want to wear a t-shirt and jeans and combat boots. Um, and in case anyone asks, uh, because I know I wear these boots all the time, uh, specifically these boots, um, they are new rocks in case anyone wants to know. Um, but I guess in a nutshell, that's kind of my aesthetic for personal style. Oh Lord, the yeah, lights. Oh, that's not good. The afternoon sun is not being my friend right now, so this is going to be funny. So bear with the crazy light change. Um, what is your favorite genre of music? And what is your favorite artist or band? My favorite genre of music, I guess, I guess you could say it's metal. I am a definite metalhead, but don't get me wrong, I still also like pop and hip-hop. But I would definitely prefer listening to metal. For example, my favorite Sirius XM radio is Octane. Um, I actually get lots of ideas from Octane because I am a uh, metal and gothic fusion dancer. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, it, uh, metal and gothic fusion dance has its basis in um, Western style belly dance, uh, improv dance, a couple other things like that. I will link the playlist of all my performances for that. I am part of a troupe. Um, I've taken the past year off mostly due to burnout and wanting a creative break. Uh, but for years I would like normally this would be my busy, busy time of the year performance wise. It's just uh, with the pandemic and everything else like that, I'm just kind of taking a break. Um, kind of let myself recharge and seeing where things lie uh, probably next year. But I will link everything down below up on my previous performances in case you guys are ever curious. As for my favorite band or artist, um, I absolutely adore in this moment. I love 
the Ritual album. Um, there's just something absolutely divine about that music. Uh, so very raw and angry and yet empowering and oh, I... <sighs> Anybody who's seen my performances or likes my performance playlists or anything else like that, and especially um, it's kind of well known amongst the my dance troupe that I'm a part of, is that I'm kind of like a, at this point, <laughs> uh, they joke that I should be an unofficial backup dancer for In This Moment because of how many performances I have done to their songs. So... If I had to pick a favorite song from them, I don't know if I could, uh, just because I adore all of it. Now, I also like Hailstorm. Hailstorm's pretty much up there. Spirit Box is a new one for me, too, and I, I always listen to, like I said, I listen to Octane, and they've been all over Octane recently, and I'm just like, ooh, what is this? I love it. It's different. Now, I know that every single group I've listed, is, I've listed so far is essentially like a female lead. I don't just listen to only female lead music and artists and everything else like that. I'm also a fan of Rotting Christ. Um, the first time I heard that was I was watching Diana Bastet, a video of her. Uh, she's a fellow um, metal fusion uh, uh, dancer. I um, highly recommend you guys check her out because... Uh, Oh boy, divine woman. But um, I watched her perform to that and I was sold immediately on giving the group a shot. And I apologize for the sniffliness. Just because I am, I was born and live in Illinois doesn't mean harvest season um, works well with me. Um, in fact, uh, as soon as harvest starts, um, I am absolutely miserable for weeks. So, please bear with these sniffles. Another question I got is, how would you describe your spirituality? And do you identify with anything in particular? So, um, some people noticed that I commented on having an altar, and that I did wish everyone, if they practiced a blessed maven. I'm pagan. Kind of like the long and short of it. Now, as for what type of pagan, I would say I'm eclectic. I'm not a Wiccan. Um, I am definitely more of an eclectic witch. As for what I identify with, I definitely have more of a feeling towards Gaelic and Irish mythology, more so than anything else. So, there is that. Um, please note that I will never at least I have no intention, I should say, of showing any of my personal practice on this channel, uh, since that is rather private and personal um, for me. I, there are several other good, excellent channels that I would recommend for that, uh, and I can list those down below if you guys are curious. But just know that while I have no problem admitting that I'm pagan or saying that I do practice, I don't like putting exactly what I do on the internet due to, due to just it being private. It's looking pretty good. Pretty good so far. <sighs> Gonna do some serious cleanup though. Especially with that nose in there. As I'm sniffling myself. What do you think? Good? Okay. Another question I got is, have I ever been ghost hunting? The answer is no. However, I would like to go. Um, at the same time though, I would have to be very particular about where I'd go. Um, more so the fact of I don't, <sighs> ghost hunting, I don't want to anger or disturb any spirits. That's the thing. Um, so I know some people, when they do go, they try to like instigate things and whatnot. And I wouldn't want to do that. I would just be very curious as like, if anyone want to talk, anybody out there and everything else. Um, so it's pretty obvious, yes, I believe in ghosts and spirits. Um, after my grandmother passed back in 2000, I am fairly certain that she visited me. Um, Cause I heard her 
and it scared the bejesus out of me. I was only 11 years old at the time. So I am, I firmly believe that spirits are out there. So I would, I'm not too sure exactly where I'd want to go. I know there's a couple of places around here that is supposedly haunted. Ashmore Estates I know is haunted, although I also know that it's suffered quite a few weather issues, um, weather, not weather issues, suffered quite a bit of weather damage. Um, I think a tornado hit the uh, hit Ashmore Estates. I have actually been there with my uh, dance troupe that I'm a part of uh, to do some videos there at the request of a videographer. Um, I refused to go in the basement. <laughs> I just, I had a feeling. I was like, no, nope, we're not doing this. Um, so I just believe that. Um, and I'm also fairly certain that my mother's old house was haunted, uh, considering whenever they were doing some light remodeling, as in painting, uh, they kept hearing people have conversations in the next room. And whenever they took apart the old stoop that was coming away from the house, it turns out it was hollow, filled with sand, and in the sand was an old rusted out gun. So, I, uh, I just, I am fairly certain that there was something at that house, and nobody can tell me differently. Long story short, yes, I'd like to go ghost hunting. I just don't know where. Oh, and I, someone did also ask if I've ever been to Salem, Massachusetts. No, I have not. However, I would love to go. I think that'd be so much fun, very educational. Probably wouldn't want to go near around Halloween though, only because of exactly how insane it must be around Halloween due to all the tourists and everything else. So I would much rather go at a different time of the year so I can kind of explore the history of it that way. Another question I got, and I guess it makes sense really, is why did I decide to start doing YouTube videos? So this was a, it was actually a, constant recommendation from several people, um, specifically my brother. Now, when I, just for kind of reference, when I mention my brother, he is my sibling in all but blood. He is my best friend, but he suggested that I start doing YouTube videos, specifically because of, well, so he said that I would be interesting to watch and I'm like no I don't think so he's like no you actually would be you have a different style of dressing you're a performer you do a lot with makeup you do a lot of cooking you are all about Halloween and doing things creatively and whatnot and you just do a lot with your life and you would be interesting to watch and i hemmed and i hawed over it for months and i realized i needed something to do during the pandemic because admittedly my job while i do enjoy it it can get pretty heavy it really can and so i wanted something that was a creative outlet that I could do in my own time that wasn't beholden to deadlines or at least deadlines that came from somebody else and instead of just be deadlines for myself and so I finally decided to do it but I love Halloween so I thought it'd be the great a great time to kind of start it would be that it's one of my favorite seasons and the fact that I like doing decorating and crafts and everything else so it's like you know what why not why not for all you know you may enjoy it for all you know you may find your new love and new passion in something and admittedly my brother was right i adore doing youtube um is it stressful sometimes yes more so the fact of I, even though I have my own deadlines for myself, if I don't meet them, I panic. But that's that. So, whoo! I almost stabbed myself. Okay, I'm gonna move my hand there. That's where that came from. Which kind of, and I know, um, 
this isn't a question that I was sent in, but I know people are going to be curious as to what am I going to do now that um, Halloween season is almost over? Gosh, that hurts saying that. So I'm thinking I'll still, I know that I fully plan on doing cooking segments. I have a lot of recipes that I've either collected over the years or created and crafted over the years, so I'll do that. I'll still do my vlogs because I find those to be incredibly enjoyable. When it comes to the holidays coming up, I'll still do Decorate With Me's because I'll do that for Yule and Christmas. I have it in the works to do a couple of get ready with me's and um, makeup. Since a lot of people keep commenting on my makeup styles and everything else that I thought I'd do kind of walkthroughs of that and how to do um, different eye looks and things in case anyone's curious. I'm just waiting to get a ring light to do that since I really don't have a good setup place for doing that in this house, unfortunately. And I, of course, will also do Vlogmas whenever we get closer to December. Um, but yeah, I I think all my content is just kind of kind of just whatever I feel like, really. Um, so whatever works for me is what I'll probably end up doing. Of course, if you guys have any uh, requests for videos from me, let me know. And I will also put that on like my list of things to do. Oh gosh, final cleanup of this is always a pain. I think she's done. <sighs> let me wipe you down. Last question that I got and this is a question I got a while ago, and I, it kind of, it kind of surprised me. So I was asked, do I have a P.O. box? The answer is no. Um, I don't have one yet. I mean, I'll admit, I, I was very shocked and kind of surprised when I was asked that. Um, mostly because I was rather humbled buy it so thank you um i mean i can get one i just didn't anticipate thinking about that for quite a while really i so i i guess what this is is like if you guys want me to get a p.o box i can get a p.o box i will look into it um thank you if that's what you guys want sure um i appreciate it uh, it just was very surprising of a question to be asked. Oh, come on, light. I'm just gonna stand back here for right now since that's the only way this lighting situation is gonna work, so bear with me here. Okay. Not the cleanest, but it's mine. So, Jack Lantern 1 is done. Um, and I have pumpkin in my hair. Oh my god. That's pretty much all the questions that I actually got. So I actually went through all the, all the questions and all the answers. So here's hoping I could narrow all this down so this video is not like a million years long. So we'll see if we can do with that. So thanks for watching. If you guys have any other questions you'd like me to answer in a future video, please let me know um, by commenting them down below or sending them to me on Instagram. I'll keep a running log of them. And then the next time I want to do a Q&A, I'll answer them then. It probably won't be until closer to Yule. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'll be baking cookies for that one. I like these interactive ones that I do something and I just sit there and just answer questions for you. I'd rather do something creative for it. So with that, I'll see you in the next one, okay? Happy hauntings.